Happy Thumbs Gaming. We shall. Hey everybody, it's Brian with Happy Thumbs Gaming. Today we're checking out level six, Isla Sorna story for Lego Jurassic World. You can see we get the level trophy achievement down in the bottom left. We're gonna shoot for that true survivor requirement and we're also gonna collect that one gold brick for completing this level. And other than that, we're just gonna have some fun and do the thing. So here we go, we got a Mr. DNA right here. It says there's a bonus map now, or a bonus level available via the map. So here's our first peek at the map and how beautiful it is. Look at that, it's amazing. And we showed you the quick race there. Uh, feel free to check it out if you want, but we're going to save that for free roam ourselves. So once uh, we're ready to go, we can go ahead and hop into the chopper and roll out. You do the chopper. Well, Dr. Malcolm, here to share a few campfire stories with my uncle. I was there. I know what happened, and so do you. In gem is my responsibility now, Doctor, and I will jealously defend its interests. You were right and I was wrong there. Did you ever expect to hear me say such a thing? Isla Nubla was just a showroom, something for the tourists. Site B was the factory floor. That was on Ina Sauna. A few weeks ago, a British family on a yacht cruise stumbled across the island. The boarders used the incident to take control of Ingent from me. Okay, so there's another island with dinosaurs, no fences this time, and you want to send people in. I need a complete photo record of those animals. You didn't contact Sarah. She'll be fine. And believe me, the research team was not a research expedition anymore. It's a rescue operation, and it's leaving right now. You can't shave three days off your deadline. Expect everything to be ready. I'm not fully supplied. <laughs> Alright, so once we uh, get control of our characters here, we're actually going to want to switch on over to Ian Malcolm, and we're going to have him head in the back of the room and approach this uh, schematic on the wall here. It actually tells us that uh, academic characters such as Ian can actually uh, handle schematics. So you might remember this. This reminds me of the old bookcase from uh, Lego Harry Potter. So simply follow the pattern indicated. It's kind of like the game of memory. Once you complete it correctly, it'll give you a ton of studs and give you a pile of building bricks. Build those guys up into, what is that? It's some sort of a paint sprayer. And I'm glad you asked. <laughs> but basically what we need to do here is all of the trucks are green and we need to concoct a green paint mix. And if you've ever seen a glad, uh, was it glad? No, uh, Ziploc, I guess it was. Yellow and blue make green. You remember those old commercials? Anyways, if you don't, you're probably fairly young, and that's okay because we're here to help you bust through and get this color combo figured out. Now, I'm not exactly sure what was going on here. This is my only real complaint of this game so far, and I've actually already reported it to them. They, uh, I don't like this control scheme. I don't like the whole left stick, twirly bobby, dealy bop. It's weird. It feels to me, maybe it's user error. Maybe I'm the only one, but it feels like I lose control of it before I even have control. And if there was a little bit of a meter difference, I don't know. Anyways, so that being said, get the green. He sprays off all the green paint onto the truck, and we get one of our three trucks checked off up above. So look at that calendar there. It wouldn't be an actual mechanic's office without one of them calendars, if you know what I'm saying. If you're a mechanic or ever been inside <laughs> mechanics, uh, yeah, you'll know what I'm saying. All right, the dart gun is acting a little funky for me on the right-hand side. I'm not exactly sure why, so if you run into a similar situation, just relocate where you're shooting from, and hopefully you will have easy access. So, all right, we did, uh, that, that's actually uh, Eddie Carr that we switched to to use the gun, so if, if I missed that, my bad. But once we shoot the two targets, we're actually going to make it all the way over. We're going to ride these wheels all the way over and put them in place. And uh, there is a mini kit over on the left for writing one and changing basically the tire on it, but we're not going to do that until free play. We're going to come back and get all the collectibles we can in free play. So, all right, we got both of these tires mounted in place. These two guys are going to actually put them in onto the, onto the actual truck. They actually kind of look like some old Volkswagen snowflakes. Not quite, but almost. My old Volkswagen Rabbit used to have a set of those on there. And, uh, all right, so they drop it like it's hot when it's all good to go, and we get another check mark up top. So two down and one to go. We can see here that there are a handful of broken objects at the front of this truck, so we're going to switch to Eddie Carr if we're not still him, and we're going to go ahead and 
beat it down with our wrench, which actually gives us another wrench, and he hops in, and guess what? Third check mark achieved. And I believe right about now is when we get a nice little uh, cameo appearance from a nice little photographer, huh? Hey, what's up? Oh, look, it's Nick Van Owen. He is uh, played by Vince Vaughn in the second movie there, and pretty fun little character. He's kind of got a little bit of wit to him, not quite the same as Jeff Goldblum's comments. Jeff takes the cake, if you ask me, in all four of the movies. I love Chris Pratt in the new one, too, but Goldblum for the win. All right, so we can see here we have a new character and actually some new abilities. The first one is actually going to be a crowbar ability. So make your way to the back door that has a red gate on it and go ahead and press the icon indicated over and over until that door busts open. Then once we get inside, we're actually going to smash a few things, but head back to the very back right, and there's another new ability. It's actually bolt cutters. This one, you have to just get the timing right and time it so that you get it in the light blue area of that. And once you do it, it busts open the door and allows us access we can then switch to Eddie Carr and get in there and beat that computer into submission. Now it's on and we got some power. What is this? Oh no, it's three targets. All right, so Eddie Carr is going to be our man again. We're going to head out there and gets to shooting. It's like Call of Duty, but not. I'm surprised we haven't seen like a Call of Duty Lego type game, you know, like a first person shooter style. I know that Mega Bloks has the rights to Call of Duty, but. That just seems like a mistake. Oh, hate done Mega Bloks, my bad. All right, and we're going to build up the pieces after we shoot down the three targets, and uh, it gives us kind of a switch that we can push around. So once we get a few more studs in our bellies, I guess it's more of in our pockets, but belly sounded fun. So we're going to go ahead and spin to win here. Basically just get on the green side of the switch and keep pressing until it stops. Once it stops, it's going to blow up. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually going to give us access to what he calls a high hide or a hide high or something. It doesn't really make sense. It sounds like he's a little bit of a hide high, if you know what I'm saying. So anyhow, we've got this down here. We're going to head on with, I don't think any character, I don't any specific characters required here. I think you can use any of them. I went ahead and used Eddie Carr, and then I tried to break free of the chains here, and it wouldn't let me out. So eventually the doors open, and we can escape. Now, there is some bolt cutters right there, and there is a mini kit inside there. We have skipped that, again, to avoid any issues of double mini kits or anything, and to also get all of the mini kits in one video, so it's easy for you guys to watch and obtain all of them. So, all right, another, we got another door over here. Guess what? We're going to have to uh, crowbar it open. Thought for a half a second it was a bolt cutter, but there's no giant lock on it, so we're going to use the, the old prior, get down stirs again. There's a handful of studs, including a few bluesies, and it's at least, at least one anyways. And uh, I think so. Maybe not. Maybe I was wrong. Uh, maybe I was wrong. I thought there was a bluesy down there. All right. Anyways, we uh, cleared all that out. I'm sure there's something going on back there for free playage. I really didn't pay too much attention to it. I saw that blue and went for it and then bailed. But you're going to look for these three brown boxes out here. We're going to smash them down, and we're going to build up the rest of this. Um, I guess it's more of a staircase. It's kind of a weird stairwell. It reminds me of the gym, the old high school gym. You know, they slide out, and they got the old bleachers. But uh, once you get the staircase, head on up with Eddie Carr and get your smash on until that computer looks like it should. And uh, at this point, we're going to need to go ahead and access the computer. Again, I don't believe it matters which character you use. I happen to have Eddie closest, so I use Eddie. We got access to a crane now, so we're going to go ahead and pull the stick towards us to bring the crane towards us. It'll automatically connect to the top piece, the roof of the, I don't know, I guess it's an RV or maybe it's an SRV, a sport recreational vehicle, I don't know. And uh, But we're going to get it on top there, and once it gets attached, we actually get a short little uh, cinematic scene, and then it rolls us out to a real cinematic. Dad, 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 dad. Oh, my God, hey, you found it. What took you so long? I couldn't get a cab. That's okay. Uh, now, listen, I gotta talk to you. Tell him I gotta talk to you. Where are you going, anyway? It's only for a few days, but I wouldn't be going if it wasn't, if it wasn't uh, really Dr. important. Dr. Malcolm. Hey, I hope I didn't scare you there. <laughs> or maybe I was trying to. Either way, whatever works. 
Uh, we had to cut the audio out of this part. I know I normally leave the audio in. Uh, main reason why we have the subtitles, though, is so that you can get in on all the action, even if the audio has to be removed. And the reason we removed the audio is because there is some Jurassic Park theme songs in the background that YouTube was flagging as third-party content match. And we certainly don't want to get in any trouble or lose any of our videos or lose our channel, for that matter, for putting up content that doesn't belong to us. So uh, we remove that, and it's almost over. We're going to get back to the audio in about three, two, one... We built a location sensor into Dr. Hardy's satellite phone, so we should be getting a reading. All right, now we've uh, gained control again of our three characters, the same three as we had before, Ian and uh, Eddie and Nick. And basically what we're going to do here is we got to find Sarah. So we're on a mission. You can see there's a Mr. DNA double helix there. So we got a, we got a little uh, cue here to defend ourselves from the compies. So compies are the little green guys. Uh, you probably remember them from the second movie. They actually attacked in packs. Um, and I think we actually see them a little bit in the third movie as well. Uh, but nonetheless, we go ahead and take them all down by just cha-cha-cha-cha-cha on them. And we're going to go ahead and use Nick Van Owen's crowbar to go ahead and pry down this big old rock here. When we do, it actually opens up a cave and lets out a few more compies. And we uh, just got a little cue there that certain characters, such as Ian, can use things in the dark. So I'm assuming this is a reference from the first movie when he actually takes off with the flare and distracts the T-Rex. But uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's some other significance. I, I don't remember him having a flare in the second movie, but I, you know what? I, I missed a lot of things along the way, so you never know. All right, on the front edge of the cliff here, there is a, quite a few items, but the most important one is going to be this silver box or silver bricks that you can knock down and rebuild up. And it actually builds kind of a, it's like a weight or like an anvil or something that totally weighs down the tree, breaks one of the branches, lowers another one that actually gives the other two access via a rope. Now that they are both up here, we can actually go and hang out on another rope. Look at that. The AI actually missed that rope. You know, I often jump and miss things like that, but it was funny to see that the AI actually missed it too. It's got a parameter, and it tries to get it, and it missed it. All right, speaking of missed it, there's a bluesy here, and I'm assuming that you probably need a female character to jump that high. There may be something else I'm missing too, but uh, there may be some free playage stuff that allows you to bounce your way around or something, but... Nonetheless, we're going to keep on keeping on. Now, there's a couple targets here, and you're going to see me accidentally tag one of these right ones up here. Basically, you want to get the one without the egg. There are, I think, three eggs scattered throughout this level. To get all three of them, you will earn yourself a mini kit. But we're going to, as I've already mentioned, going to save all that for free play. All right, so as mentioned, there's there's my mistake. I took down the first egg there, and uh, it doesn't really matter. And there's there's me having bad aim again. I was a little too close to the target, and uh, some objects were getting in the way. But your goal is to take out the target and then quickly build these pieces. Speaking of quickly building, if you guys notice, like there doesn't seem to be like slow builders and fast builders. Like it just certainly is like seems like everybody's a quick builder. That's kind of a nice feature. But as you can see, we built up this piece into like it seems to be like a weird chopper. You jump on it and it chops. Inside there is a tracking item. Go ahead and use the baldy, Eddie Carr, to go ahead and track the item, which then gives us access to some buildy bits, which we build into a king size boinger. Actually, it's not, it's a little mini guy again. But we'll go ahead and jump on it and get our ba boing on, and both characters can get up there and hang tough. Boom! Bring it on down now. We got that down, so we'll go ahead and use that as a stairwell. And it's a little bit of a far jump there, so make sure you got. Uh, your your Nike Air swoosh is on. All right, so here is a new little segment here. We're going to see, uh, I believe that's a Stegosaurus. My uh, dinosaur knowledge is a little outdated. I haven't studied dinosaurs since about sixth grade. So as much as I love them, uh, my naming may be off a little bit here and there. But I'm pretty sure that's a Stego. Um, all right, some more compies come in, and keep in mind there is a trophy achievement for taking out 50 compies. Now, uh, coming up, there's a spot where you can kind of uh, farm the compies, so if you're in a hurry to get that trophy achievement, you could certainly take advantage of this moment coming up. If not, then um, you can wait for another time. So we're just smashing and grabbing everything in sight. You can see in the back there is a Nick wall there. We can go ahead and pry it open. Get our caca bar out. That's right, our crowbar. Now we're going to hop up top here. And uh, the spots allow photographers to distract. So basically what we need to do here is we need to take a series of pictures. Uh, I believe there's three of them, maybe only two. But once we get a couple of them, it distracts him, and it actually cues a cinematic cutscene, which we will dip out to right about now. Hey, Nick! 
Sarah. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Those animals are just walked by. Did you see them? It's a family group. If I can just get a shot of the nest. I'll be right back. Sarah, no, no! Just stay there. Sarah. Sarah. She's much too close. So when the story kicks us back to Control, we actually find ourselves in control of Sarah and Nick. We have lost our other two guys, or at least lost control of them. They're up, they're up there watching, spectating. But uh, your goal is going to be to head to the far right corner of the area and build up the box and then climb inside of it. Now, we have to do this three times, and every time he... Uh, climbs in there, he eventually gets spotted by the Stegosaurus, he comes over, whips his tail at us, and basically shakes us out of the box and uh, stuns the Stegosaurus when that happens. So here you're going to see the first example of that right now. He's kind of stunned in there, so we're going to run up to this photography point and take a picture and kind of give him the old blindage. <whistles> Alright, so now that he can't see, we've got a little bit of a, a break, but we find, speaking of break, some stuff broke through on the left hand side so we're going to cut over there as quickly as possible and build those up now keep in mind that the stegosaurus is trying to defeat you so he's going to come after you and try to knock out this box you're building it is very possible that he could get in your way and prevent you from building the box and i'm actually going to show you this here in a minute and i'm going to show you how frustrating it can be in order to uh to get this completed now I tried to distract him, I tried to do quick build, I tried to do all sorts of things, and I just had terrible, terrible luck of getting this last item built. Now, as it turns out, you need to have him uh, smash around a little bit, and finally, eventually, the third building bricks will fall down. But, see, he's too close. His tail's within reach, and every time I get close to building it, he knocks me down and actually makes me restart the build on this box. So, I, I get frustrated. I think, okay, now I got him, now I got him. Oh, nope. And all right, so now I'm going to run over here and I'm going to try to distract him, right? I'm going to get that tail flopping over here. Now, keep in mind, too, there is an amber brick available in this area. There are these amber-looking, shining uh, rocks. If he gets all three of those with his tail, we will unlock an amber brick. And we're not trying to do that. So our our area of dis, you know distracting him and getting him away from our important stuff is, is very slim. It's very small because if we do go over there and distract him, he's likely going to blow open one of those amber bricks. And again, we're trying not to do that. So from my standpoint, this was extremely frustrating. From a player standpoint, like from anybody else, you know, you probably don't care if you get the amber brick or not. So, but look, you can see him. He's just waiting over there, just hiding out, just bullying me into not allowing this to happen. It's like the game knows I'm trying to record this in a nice, timely, methodical fashion, and he's just doing everything he can to destroy it. But then I fooled him. Look at this. I do the old switcheroo, and I got him for sure this time, right? Yes. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe I should have done that five minutes ago. Maybe Sarah is the key to building this. But regardless, I wanted to show you guys that because it's a really frustrating moment. And hopefully, uh, if you go through it, at least you can have uh, a little bit of, uh, I don't know, reassurance that you weren't the only one. All right, third picture, zooms him out, and we roll to the cutscene. Fire! Fire at base camp! No, water makes smoke billow. You start. Who started a fire? I just wanted to make dinner. Wanted ready when you guys got back. Kelly, Kelly, you have no what idea. Is your locker up curiosity? You really came Eddie? on that way? Huh? I don't get it. It's this engine on the, on the side of that chopper. I don't get that. Why, why would Hammond send two teams? All right. Isla Sorna complete. Free play unlocked. And that's how it all starts. Trophy achievement are all things of our past now. So 
Heck to the yeah, we're rolling right on through this. And uh, what do you guys think? What's uh, Do you have a favorite level so far? Have you played enough? I know we've only got six levels under our belt. We're not even quite halfway. Uh, we do uh, have lots ahead of us, actually. Lots ahead of us. We did unlock a couple of new characters, or at least variants of the same characters we had. And uh, we should get a couple of... Uh, not at the table, Carlos. Uh, get a couple of those uh, vehicles tokens as well. So let's see here. Yeah, we did. We got the Gatherer because we built those up. And we got the Observer. I, that's probably one of the ones we built up too. I don't know about the Van Owen though. I guess we put the roof on that one. So we'll claim we'll claim credit for that too. Uh, no Amber Brick, one Gold Brick. But that's going to take us to the final, final, final screen. So O oh, to the yeah. That's going to wrap up Lego Jurassic World Level 6 Story. That's how it all starts. Trophy Achievement. Uh, yeah, fun stuff. Isla Sorna is now in our rear view. Well, at least the level itself is. We're going to be on this island for quite a while. Hey, if you guys have any questions, comments, just simply want to get involved in the conversations, head on over to any of our social pages, such as Facebook, Twitter, or, you know, you can always comment, vote, subscribe down below. We also have Instagram, G+, and Twitch. HappyThumbsGaming.com is where our trophy achievement guides are, including a trophy achievement guide for this game. So, I highly encourage you to uh, peruse around in those links down below in the video description and click the ones that uh, suit your fancy. As for me, I will be back soon, but until next time... A bit, a bit, a bit. That's all, folks. So, yep.